Hear me, Thales of Miletus, you who said the world was made of water. Hear me, Democritus, who said that all things were made of indivisible atoms. Hear me, great Pythagoras, for whom the substance of the cosmos was not matter and energy, but numbers. Pour your wisdom and invention into me. For tonight, I pose a question so profound that everyone in this theater will be driven irrevocably and irretrievably insane. For tonight, we contemplate the very nature of reality. Reality, we are all interested in it. Some of us have even been there. A poet once wrote that you could find the universe in a glass of wine. Clearly, this poet was a stranger to reality. But what if he was right? What if you can find the universe in a glass of wine? After all, doesn't a glass of wine contain everything that is fundamental to the world? A glass of wine seems cool and calm, yet it roils with motion and inexhaustible energy. A glass of wine seems dead, yet it contains life, biological processes, fermentation. A glass of wine seems light, especially if it's a nice rosé, but it has mass. Still, let's not get carried away. The universe is pretty big. There's no way you could fit it into a glass of wine. You'd spill it everywhere. And if you didn't blot it up quickly with some napkins and some seltzer water, you'd have a great stain on your hands. Hear me, Jove, who throws his bolts down from the heavens. Hear me, Poseidon, who shakes the earth and makes a maelstrom of the oceans. Hear me, mighty Achilles, wily Odysseus, great Dionysus. Show a light to me to guide me from this darkness of ignorance into the truth and the answer. Reality has a dual nature. It is both the physical world of matter and energy and the conceptual world of abstractions and ideas. Ideas that are timeless, such as the Pythagorean theorem, the theory of relativity, or an idea I once had for a robot masseuse that didn't work out well at all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one thing we know about reality is that it's very large. Picture the largest sandwich you have ever eaten. It was a huge sandwich, but compared to the universe, it was nothing. It was a canapé. It was a crouton. What does reality do? Does it just sit there, keeping it real? <laughs> reality is everything that is and everything that has ever been. Every king or queen or peasant who has ever walked the earth, every heartbreak and every triumph, all the struggles, the agony and ecstasy of childbirth and death, the red lobster chain of restaurants, everything. But. Reality is so much more. No human mind can conceive of the size of a galaxy. Yet, the universe has galaxies more numerous than there are grains of sand in all the deserts and all of the beaches of the world. And each galaxy, however vast, is but a pinprick in an endless curtain of night. Ladies and gentlemen, the sky is an abyss without bottom. The universe is mostly empty space, but try getting a table there on a Wednesday night. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, in sum, the substance and nature of reality is that reality is nature, and nature's reality is that nature's nature is real and, and natural. Ladies and gentlemen, are these paradigms commensurable? Is there bomb in Gilead? Is the human brain complex enough to understand the riddles of its own existence? 
Keep in mind that the human brain also came up with those little smiley faces people put in emails. So let's not get our hopes up about the human mind. But wait, wait, who is that? That shape coming from the shadows, can it be? Yes, it is great, Dionysus, Dionysus, tell me the secret, whisper in my ear. I have it, I know the answer. Thank you, gods and myths. Thank you, you who are not real and yet who have shown me the truth. The nature of reality is that it is real. It is the cold slap that wakes us from our dreams. It is a real place, like Mexico, except you can drink the water. Thank you. Thank you, gods of old. Thank you for revealing this great truth to me. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience and forbearance. Truly, you are the audience of my dreams.